who in the right mind would want to send their large language model queries up to a SaaS service in the cloud when you could do it all locally and privately on your desktop, on your laptop computer? Nobody. That's the answer to that question, which is exactly why I put this tutorial together. I want to show you how easy it is to write a simple Python program that can run large language models like DeepSeek, like Llama, like cloud, all locally on your desktop or on your laptop. Now, by the way, I'm going to do this all in a simple Python program, but I should say there's also other tools that make it easy as well. You can try Olama. I got some tutorials on running large language models with Olama. You can use Modular's Max platform, which is actually the right way to do things going forward. But you know what? If you want to roll your own, do it the right way. Write your own Python program and query a large language model running on your local machine. That is exactly what I'm going to show you how to do right now. And we're going to start off by logging into Hugging Face, taking a look at the large language model that we want to use. and getting that API key so that we can download everything locally. And that is exactly what we're going to do next. If you want to run a large language model locally, you've got to find a large language model to run. And the place to go to do that is Hugging Face. It's like GitHub, but for large language models. Or maybe it's like Docker Hub for large language models, but it's a hub for large language models. So log in, you're going to need to register with a username and password because you're actually going to have to get an API key, which only registered users can get. But log in, and once you get in here, go in and search for the large language model that you want to run. Now you'll notice that one of the first ones that comes up here when I click on that search bar is Deep Seek. Now, I'm actually running this just on a local computer with no GPU. Like this is just a, a an ninth generation Intel machine. And I'm still going to be able to run a large language model, but I'm not going to use a, a full blown deep seek. I'm actually going to search for just a, a slightly less intense large language model, specifically Tiny Llama, which has just a, a, a slightly smaller number of uh, configurations in here that make it a little bit easier for me to deal with. What can we say? 1.1 billion parameters for the safe tensors. That should be good enough for this example. Now, when you get to the page, you can read the model card, but what we need to do is we need to click on that files and versions link because you can see there's a, a nice little 2.2 gigabyte file there. That's our safe tensors. We need that. We need to get that onto our local machine. Now, there's also some other information there that will tell our Python application how to send tokens and read tokens like the tokenizer Jace will need that. I'm just going to download everything from this folder and bring it onto my local file system. So keep an eye on that folder. All of those files we'll need. We'll download those in just a moment. The next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go and click on our profile, go into access tokens and just create a, a read token so that we can actually download the model. So create an access token only has to have read permissions, copy that long number, or you can commit it to memory if you can do that, or if you want to copy, save it locally. I'm not here to judge. And once you've got that information, head on over into Visual Studio Code. And we're going to start writing some Python code to actually download that model and query it as we run it locally. Okay, with the API key on hand, knowledge of the model I'm going to use, I'm heading into Visual Studio Code. I'm going to create a Python environment for myself. By the way, I don't do this anymore. From here on in, I'm only using Pixie and Magic. It's a much better package manager, and everybody should be using it on new projects from here on in. I'd even suggest using Mojo instead of Python, which is a superset of Python, but <laughs> we'll get into that a little bit later. So I'm going to set up that environment and I got a couple of pips that I've got to do. Uh, I've got to first do a pip install for PyTorch. So I got to get PyTorch. After that pip install completes, I then need to go in and do a pip install for Hugging Face Hub. And that's going to take just a, a moment to install. And then after Hugging Face Hub has gone in, 
the last thing to do is just do a pip install for those transformers. Just broke that down into three separate steps. So you can just kind of see that happening. But once those pips are done, I think I'm good. And it's time to actually go in and start writing some code. So I'm going to go in, create a new Python file. I think I'm just going to call this huggingface.py. Nothing too crazy. And from here, it's time to just start writing some code. So from Hugging Face Hub, import HF Hub downloads. So that's going to help me download the files from Hugging Face. I need to, to know information about the model and I need to know information about the tokenizer. And from that, I'm going to create a pipeline that allows me to query the large language model that's going to be running on my local machine. So I'm going to import auto tokenizer, the auto model, and the pipeline. And from there, well, I'm going to start writing a little bit of code. I'm going to clear a variable with my API key. I think that's an old key. I'm going to change that a little bit later. And once that's in there, I'm just going to declare a variable that points to the name of the model from Hugging Face. And that's just tiny llama slash tiny llama dash 1.1 b dash chat version one so if you're going to be using deep seek if you're going to be using cloud if you're going to be using some other large language model, just it's the the name of the model that you put right in there now i showed you there were a bunch of files uh, in this repository there were a bunch of files listed in there i'm just going to put all of those into an array here so i'm just mapping what i saw in that repository on hugging face into this array called required files right here you can see the config json tokenizer model eval results safe tensors i put everything in here i don't think I put, put the readme in there but you never know what you might need so i'm throwing them all in um and they're just going to download them and I'm going to be using the HF Hub download tool. And what will happen is the tool will actually download all of these files and then put them into a Hugging Face directory on my local machine. So the tool then knows where to find them. So we download all of those. We're going to include the API key there. The repo that we're downloading is repo ID, Hugging Face model. We download all of those files. We even do a little print line that says uh, we've downloaded it and here's the location. Now, a couple of things we need in order to query the model. Well, first of all, we need to know what the model is and we can actually ask the API to take a look at the, the name of the model from Hugging Face and it'll send us the official model name back that is usable with the API. Then we need to get the tokenizer object. So we say, okay, now API, uh, why don't we find the tokenizer from the pre-trained model here? And I think one of the, the files on Hugging Face was tokenizer.json. So I'm just going to read that, process it, and then pull it back into our application. So now we've got two objects that represent the model and represent the tokenizer. And then, well, you know what comes next. We're just going to create a pipeline that we can use to query this model. So text generation pipeline equals pipeline. Specify that it's text generation we're doing. We're not doing image processing. We're not doing audio. We specify the name of the model. That's the model that we just configured on line 32. We specify the tokenizer, which we've got on line 33. And then the max length, which I'll put at 1,000, which is going to be way too much. Um, and in fact, we should probably even limit the tokens here, but I'm not going to do that right now. I want to show you the, the fundamentals here, why mess things up. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pass some text to that pipeline. Is Scrum certification hard? That's the question we're going to get asked. That will send us a response. Then we just print the response back. Now, actually, I might... I might change that a little bit. By the way, Darcy DeClute's book is in the back right there if you want to take a, a look at how to get certified. I did mention that the token needs to be updated. So I'm just going to quickly update that token with a, a more recent one. So make sure you're using the right token. And then why don't I change that? Darcy might get mad at me, but I'll say, tell me a funny programming joke. Now, Tiny Lamb is not very good at jokes. Um, and as I said, I didn't limit the, <laughs> the response here. But the point is, we're going to get some content back from a locally running large language model. And again, 
I'm running on a ninth generation Intel i7 processor with 16 gigs of memory and no video card. I, it's not even a bad video card. I have no video card. And this is going to run. Um, it's going to download all of the files. You can see where it puts into user owner cache hugging face. So that's the, the location that it's bringing all of these files down to. That's going to take a, a minute or two to, to download. So be patient. I think as it runs, I get a little bit of a slap on the wrist. It says truncation was not explicitly activated, but max length is provided a specific value. Use, please use truncation equals true. If you don't use truncation equals true, you're going to get a long response. So what do I get here? I'm going to take a look at the response. And of course, my question was, tell me a funny programming joke. And the joke is a programmer accidentally deleted a file from his hard drive. He tried to recover it, but it was gone. He tried to recover it again, but it was gone. That's hilarious. As <laughs> I said, this isn't really a, a language model for jokes. I probably should have asked it. The capital of Ontario, which is Toronto, by the way, very close to where the the city in the Simpsons, Springfield, was uh, based on. So, by the way, i got a book called Pickering and Springfield behind me. Um, but there you go. Um, even though I should have maybe truncated this response a, a little bit, you actually see how easy it is to, to get a large language model running on your local machine. It's just a matter of getting your API key, finding out what the model is, downloading the files associated with it, creating a pipeline and then doing your queries. And of course, this was Tiny Lama here, but if you want to do this with DeepSeek, you want to do it with Claude, you want to do it with any open source model over on Hugging Face, if you want to process images, if you want to process audio, if you want to do stable diffusion, all of those opportunities are out there. Now, by the way, this was done in Python. I've also got videos on how to do it with Alama and how to do it with modulars mock max platform which is the the very best way to do it so please feel free to check those out as well